Okay, we are on part two of I want to quit smoking cigarettes. Now, cigarettes are an addiction. If you watch part one that I just created, I gave suggestions from the Mayo Clinic that they had given, which are very good suggestions, and you can look them up yourself. I'll try to put a link in this video for you so that you can look those suggestions up. And they have good suggestions and even suggestions that I would also give. But I want to point something out. One suggestion that the Mayo Clinic and all of their research, research and all of their intelligence that they did not give was they did not say pray. Pray to Jesus Christ to be able to quit. And I am here to tell you as I said, this is part two, but the last shall be first and the first shall be last. This is the last part of this video series on I want to quit smoking. And I am going to give you the truest form of strategy. And that is believing that in the name of Jesus, you can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth you. You can. And I know you've been to, maybe been to that place where you have, maybe you've never tried to quit and maybe you're going in with the mentality of, I just don't think I can. And I'm telling you, I rebuke that mentality. I rebuke that thought process in Jesus name. And I lose freedom in your life against this bondage of smoking cigarettes. You can do it in him. The Bible says that Jesus said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Right now, I'm praying for you, my friend, and if you're watching this, I know that you want to quit. I even know that you have reasons to quit. Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's family members. Maybe you don't want to make other people sick because you're giving them secondhand smoke, and secondhand smoke can be worse than smoking cigarettes. And if you are living with someone and they are suffering from your habit, they love you and they're living with you. So love them enough to stop uh, hindering their health because of your habit. And I'm not meaning this in any judgment. I'm just saying that it is another reason for you to put out there on your list of reasons why. Why do I want to quit? Why do I need to quit? It's not just because some apostolic Christian uh, woman on YouTube or Facebook said that I should quit. If you are watching this, you know you have reasons. You know you're waking up coughing in the morning. You know you're out of breath when you go up the hill. You know your health is not the same. You know that you are putting your life in jeopardy of cancer, emphysema, I have watched somebody die from emphysema. It is not a pleasant way to die. It is very, very difficult way to die and very uncomfortable and horrendous of a way to die. But it happens a lot with smokers and it doesn't have to be your testimony. Your testimony can be, hey, I decided to quit and I'm gonna quit. In fact, that's the number one way to succeed is to say, I'm going to quit and quit. Cold turkey. Don't do all these deals. I'll do it on this day or I'll do it uh, on my birthday or I'll do it, you know, I'm putting it off and putting it off and putting it off or you didn't succeed. So then you just don't do it again. No, if you don't succeed, try again. But with your trying and with your desire, we are coupling faith. And that is one thing that was not mentioned on the 10 self-help tips to stop smoking on the Mayo. I gave those and the, they're good, good self tips, good self-help tips. They are good. I'm not going to say that they aren't good. They are good, but I am going to say this. They did not list praying. They didn't list repenting and asking God to forgive us for defiling our temple and, and for taking on an addiction and, and making it 
more of a struggle for our lives <laughs> than was ever intended for us to have. We all have been tempted to uh, pick up those cigarettes. If the, those of us who grew up with parents, I talked about that in the first video. I told my testimony. I started smoking when I was eight years old. You heard that if you heard the first part. Just want to put it in there if this is the first part that you have heard. It is part two. But what I'm trying to say is smokers have all, for some reason, picked up smoking for whatever reason, and then many smokers struggle to put it down even when they want to quit. It, it is very difficult for some people to quit smoking because they get the habit, they get the addiction of the nicotine, and they get that oral cessation of having something in their mouth. So we're going to talk about some of those things too. You can uh, use toothpicks. They were in the first one, but I didn't mention this. I call them quit sticks and I make them for my family and friends. You can buy them at a health food store. They literally call them quit sticks. Ask for them at the register. Some of them are at the register. And they soak these toothpicks in peppermint oil or whatever. Or you can make them at home. Soak them in cinnamon or, or your favorite flavor or whatever. Vanilla. I don't care. You can just soak these toothpicks. And whenever you think you want a cigarette, put a toothpick in your mouth in Jesus' name. And put the name of Jesus all over the effort that you are making. And God is going to help you if you allow him. You're going to have to say no. You're going to have to tell your flesh, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it to my body. I'm not going to do it to my loved ones. And I'm not going to do it to my God. My God said that I am free. I am free from the bondages of cigarettes and addiction. I am healed. And he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And I am telling you this backed up with the authority and the promise of the Word of God. Read it for yourself. Find verses in the Bible. With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And then you take those verses and you write them out and put them on your, uh, your mirror, put them on your cigarette pack, put them on your ashtrays, put them wherever the place is that you go to smoke. God is going to help you. I'm going to pray for you. And especially if you ask for prayer, if you message me on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you have seen this, I promise I'm going to pray with you. And where two or more agree touching any one thing, it's going to be done. And we're going to believe and you are going to succeed. Say, I believe I will succeed. I can quit. Because what did we just say? I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. Hallelujah. So, uh, coming to you from a, a woman or a young woman, I smoked from the time that I was eight years old. I started experimenting by 11. I was smoking a pack a day. 18, I was full-fledged addicted to cigarettes, and nobody could have got me to quit smoking. But I came to church. I came to an altar. Nobody in the church told me I had to quit smoking. I knew I needed to do that. I felt the conviction. And I felt like I, I I felt like it was something that Jesus wanted me to do. And I spoke to Jesus and I said, Jesus, I cannot, I can't do it. I've tried it before. I've got to have your help. And so I even made this declaration at one point. I was praying at the altar and it was cigarettes that had kept me from coming to church the first time because I started feeling condemnation. Don't let that happen for you. I was like, I felt so condemned that I was smoking that I just said, forget it. And then I, I took back up my other habits of smoking marijuana, drinking. And then before I knew it, I was completely back out. I was out <laughs> worse off than I was before whenever I first came. And I got into more drugs and into more situations. And I was out there for three years. But I'm telling you, we serve a merciful God. I don't uh, suggest that you test his mercy, but when we need his mercy, it is there. Do not just rely on his mercy and say, I can do what I want because he is gracious. 
well, yes, he's gracious, but he also has expectations for us as his children to honor and line up with his word. And I'm talking about where he said, don't defile your temple. All right. And so again, the, turning your lung black has to in some way defile your body. All right. So don't be offended. I'm not trying to judge you. I'm just saying that I do think it is a form of defiling your temple. I really do. Abusers of themselves with mankind. The Bible talks about those that, that type of people and, it, and it's a very negative outcome for them. And smoking cigarettes can be a negative outcome for a lot of people because they die of cancer, they die of emphysema, and they give other people illnesses from secondhand smoke. And I say this in love. So don't say that, you know, Reverend Sherry Parrott judged me and said I was going to hell and all of this. I am not trying to be your judge. I am trying to support you in doing something that was difficult for me. I know it's difficult. I know about addiction, but I also know the one who frees us from addiction. And it may have to be that we put a little bit more effort into it. Some people are just automatically, you know, they get the Holy Ghost and they're they're delivered and free of all of addictions and, and half of their humanity and they walk around with angels' wings the rest of their life. But some of us, we have to get our flesh under subjection to the Spirit. And we have to make a plan and we have to make that plan work. Okay? So in Jesus' name, I pray right now. I pray for you that you are able to do the thing that you have always wanted to do, which is to quit smoking. It's been difficult for you, but in the name of Jesus, I pray that the strength and power of the almighty God who is for you and not against you, that he upholds you with the right hand of his righteousness and he deliver you. He sets you free and he loose you from bondage and he give you freedom. This is my prayer for you. I will pray with you if you if you message me and ask you ask me to, I will pray with you. I know where you're at. I have been there. Going back to uh the reason I kind of quit going to church and and when I thought about that later, I thought about the fact that I I gave up 3 years of Christianity and peace and walking with God and worship and brother, you know, uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord and relationships and ministry and outreach and witnessing. I gave that up for cigarettes. That truly was the reason why that I couldn't hang in there was because of cigarettes. Now, nobody is judging you. If you smoke cigarettes and you come to our church, my husband's a pastor, or I'm a pastor's wife, we are not judging you. But we know that you, deep down, that you are wanting to get rid of that habit and that you need to get rid of that habit. And it's entirely scriptural and spiritual for you to get rid of that habit. So we want to support you, but we would never judge you. And we know it can take a while sometimes. But at the same time, we're not trying to be softies and go, oh, take your time. You know, we're, so, we're saying, come up with a strategy. Pray. Let us pray with you. Find yourself at an altar. You know how many packs of cigarettes we found at altars and we dance and shout and praise the Lord for those when we find them? Because that means that somebody has put that habit on the altar. And I'm asking you, put this habit on the altar today. Let the Lord Jesus Christ have this habit. Give it to him and continually pray. If you have to pray every day, pray every day. But what I told the Lord the second time that I came back, because I was so upset that for me, it was cigarettes that made me walk away. And I said, Lord, I said, if I take a drag off of another cigarette, I pray that you would just let me die. <laughs> and I kind of had to give myself this, uh, you know, I, I had to put something so drastic out there for myself so that I would uh, prevent myself from doing it. Well, it did work, but let me tell you, um, I'm not, I'm not saying that God is going to kill somebody, you know, who makes that deal. Cause he's a gracious God, 
But God is big enough to help you come overcome. He is the overcomer. He is everything to us. He, he gives us power by the Holy Ghost. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive power. Maybe you have not received the Holy Ghost. Maybe you need to know more about being filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues with the evidence of speaking in tongues that you have received the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And we are made overcomers by the word of our testimony. So I'm giving you my testimony today. I'm not proud of the fact that I walked away from Christianity because of cigarettes. I'm not proud of that, but that was the condemnation for me. So I'm asking you not to feel condemnation. Understand God's grace is alongside of you, but keep trying and you will succeed. He's going to help you become more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I, I have taken way too much time. I hope this has gotten through to you that you can do it. You want to quit? Quit. And you will be able to do it with Jesus in your life and by your side. And I'm going to pray that you succeed in Jesus' name. God bless you.